Hey all, it's Justin. I just got a new MacBook Pro with a new M1 chip. My first concern was, how does Fusion 360 work? So I'm a pretty diehard Mac user. In the CAD and CAM world, this has not always been an easy thing, but it just works best for me most of the time. If you haven't heard, Apple has released a new processor, the M1, in a new technology which they're calling Apple Silicon. It has caused quite the shakeup for any software that is created for the Mac, including Fusion. We'll start from the beginning with this new MacBook Pro. I've only installed LastPass, iStat, and Chrome, so let's start with the Fusion install. I'm going to open the DMG file in my downloads here. It's going to mount that image so we can install Fusion. Just right click to open and install. I'm going to speed up some of this. The computer is pretty snappy, but there's no reason to watch it load things. Here it's going to ask me if I want to open a file from the internet, and of course I do. The internet's always safe, right? Next part will depend on the speed of your internet, and mine is okay fast, so it took about a minute 35 to install this portion. As of the time of making this video, Fusion 360 will use Apple's new Rosetta 2 technology, which allows the old Intel-based architecture software, like Fusion right now, to work on the new Apple Silicon M1 computers. If you're following along like I was during the Apple announcement of these new chips and computers, you're probably pretty shocked when you saw this. On M1 systems, Rosetta seamlessly runs apps built for Intel-based Macs. So even without an app update, you can keep working on that Fusion 360 project and this is essentially my reaction when my worlds collided. I understand enough to know that it's pretty remarkable that it works so well because it's essentially using a different type of architecture of software. Now the goal with Rosetta 2 is that it's essentially a stopgap between when developers can get their software ready and optimized for the new M1 chip. It'll allow software to run essentially as it had before, which is pretty amazing. Speaking of, as I've been babbling along, Fusion's now ready to use, so this is pretty exciting. I hadn't opened it up literally till right now, so you're seeing it as I am, and it's loading up exactly how I'd expect it. Let's open one of our iMac base files and see how that opens up. I'm assuming it's a little slower than it would be normally because none of these files are cached already. They haven't been downloaded from the cloud. They're just literally thumbnails. Well, this is encouraging. This is exactly what I would expect. This is our iMac base, and it's looks pretty good. I'm not using a mouse here, so I'm just dragging around with the trackpad, which is not a great user experience if you're a Fusion and trackpad user. Since I don't have any fancy footage of the outside of this computer, and you wouldn't be able to tell anyway, I'll show you that this is the app Apple M1 chip MacBook Pro from 2020. Very few upgrades you can do, and I got the 16 gigs of RAM and then a 512 gig hard drive, but other than that, that's about all you can choose. My goal with this video is to show you exactly how it would be to set up Fusion on the new M1 computer and then test it out a little bit and see how Fusion is. So let's open up our renderings and see how this works. I don't know that it's going to be significantly better because it's not exactly something that would have been improved with the M1 chip. It is really efficient, but uh, Fusion renderings are very CPU intense anyway, and it's not going to have a massive gain, but it does look like it's much better than my 2018. MacBook Pro that just had an i5 in it. I'm going to let this render a little bit and see how quickly we can get a decent result. You can see at the top of the screen there the iStat application that runs that essentially gives you monitoring of your computer is showing that we're crushing all eight cores, little blue bars. So that's what you'd expect. I mean, that's what would happen before. It's a very CPU and intense rendering engine. Let's look through a little bit of the settings of iStat doesn't seem like they've updated this for the M1 yet, so we're not seeing most of the sensors, which is unfortunate. So we can't really see what the CPU temp is or anything like that. Although, it took quite a while, almost a minute, before the fans to really react, and this is completely different than how my old laptop would have ran. It's much more energy efficient than the older in Intel-based machines were. They actually did a cool thing where they put the RAM literally with the processor so they don't have to pass information back and forth. It's much more of a efficient process. Get this up a little bit, but at about 100 seconds in, it's looking really great. Something I could use as a draft rendering already. One thing I know for sure is the keyboard is way better than my last MacBook. It feels much more solid and 
less mushy. So we're back in the design space, and really the big benefit of this M1 chip and the new laptops or Mac minis is that they're really efficient, and that means battery life is days, not a few hours, and that's really honestly a pretty big deal. For me, as much as I love using my iMac, it isn't portable, and I need to take something to the shop and work there, and this new MacBook Pro should be something that really can take me through the next couple of years in a nice speedy pace that I'm not sitting around waiting for cam to generate. There are a few known issues with Fusion 360 running on Rosetta 2, which we expect to be resolved. Those are covered on a post by Kaching on the Fusion 360 team, which I'll link below. I hope you found this comforting if you use Fusion 360 and are needing to upgrade your Mac. I included links below if you're looking to buy a new Mac. Using those links really helps us out. If you want to support the channel, but don't want a Patreon-like subscription, Buy Me A Coffee is the perfect option. The idea of Buy Me A Coffee is to offer someone a cash equivalent of buying them a drink as a thank you. It's a one-time thing to show your support for the channel and keeps the content and coffee flowing. Look for the link below for Buy Me A Coffee. If you want to get our cat and cam models that we show in the videos, subscribe to our Patreon at cnc.money. Thanks. Oh hi there, I see you've made it this far. Now click one of these other really really good videos, so Justin will be happy.